In the recent years, much attention has been paid to China's efforts to modernize its military with new naval vessels, aircraft, nuclear weapons, and other equipment. China has made significant progress on these fronts, but weaponry and equipment are only part of the equation. To successfully project power, countries also need adequate infrastructure and logistics capabilities for deploying troops and equipment. China is currently undertaking a major expansion of its infrastructure that is enhancing its ability to project military power along its western frontier. Within its western regions of Tibet and Xinjiang, China is constructing and upgrading dozens of airports and heliports, a large majority of which are military or dual-use facilities. China is supplementing its air power expansion with new roads, rail, and other infrastructure that are upgrading the PLA's logistics capabilities and enabling more rapid movement of troops, weaponry, and equipment. The pace of development in the region accelerated following standoffs and skirmishes between China and India along disputed portions of their border in 2017 and 2020. The far-flung regions of Tibet and Xinjiang are of particular concern for China's leaders. They are expansive in size, together accounting for approximately 30 percent of China's territory much of which consists of harsh desert and mountain terrain. The two regions also border a total of 11 different countries, putting them on the front lines of China's relations with its western neighbors. So, how is China's infrastructure progress in the western frontier? How are these buildings integrated with military applications? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. As we all know, China and India faced off again in 2020, this time at the disputed western sector of the border, resulting in deaths on both sides. This marked the first time in decades that border tensions between China and India resulted in fatalities, and the flashpoint remains a major source of tension between the two countries. In fact, India is not China's only concern in the region. Leaders in Beijing also harbor concerns about internal instability and the potential for separatist activity within Tibet and Xinjiang, both of which are autonomous regions with large ethnic minority populations. Together these perceived threats have compelled China to invest heavily in upgrading the two regions' infrastructure. New and upgraded airports promised to bring an influx of new business activity and tourism to areas previously disconnected from China's main commercial and political centers. New roads and rail aim to do the same and facilitate easier movement of people within the regions. At the same time, investments in military and dual-use air facilities afford the PLA a growing menu of options for projecting air power within the region. New ground infrastructure is likewise rendering remote areas significantly more accessible for Chinese military and security forces, allowing them to project power more easily within Tibet and Xinjiang and potentially into neighboring countries. One of the most visible elements of China's infrastructure investments in Tibet and Xinjiang has been the construction and upgradation of airports and heliports. New and upgraded air facilities significantly enhance the PLA's ability to move personnel and equipment in the region via air, which is particularly important given the unforgiving terrain of both Xinjiang and Tibet. They also offer the PLA additional platforms from which to launch airborne surveillance and reconnaissance missions, as well as strikes and counterstrikes in the event of a conflict. Much of the activity is taking place within Tibet in areas close to China's disputed border with India. Since 2017, China has initiated upgrades, such as new terminals, hangars, aprons, and runways, at all five of Tibet's existing airports. All five of these airports are military and civilian dual-use facilities. China is supplementing these with four new airports in Tibet. Three of these Luntz Airport, Ngari Burang Airport, 
and Shigats Tingri Airport are positioned less than 60 kilometers from the China India border. The new facilities also fill large gaps along the Indian border where there were previously no airports. If PLA Air Force units are based at these airports, China will gain several new nodes along the border from which to project air power into India. The PLA is also significantly scaling up its ability to conduct helicopter based operations through the construction of at least five new heliports in Tibet and the upgrading of two heliports. These heliports, which are operated by PLA Army Aviation Units, are dotted throughout Tibet, stretching from Rutog County in the west to Nyingki City in the east. The addition of these heliports stands to significantly enhance PLA operations in the mountainous region since helicopters are capable of maneuvering in ways that airplanes and ground equipment cannot. Similar developments are taking place in Xinjiang. At least 15 airports have been upgraded in Xinjiang since 2017, with seven of these being military or dual-use facilities. One such airport is Hotan Airport, a major dual-use airport located approximately 240 kilometers from the western portion of the LAC. At Hotan, a new runway has been constructed along with additional tarmacs, hangars, and other facilities. Less than 5 kilometers southeast of the main airport area, a surface-to-air missile complex is being upgraded, enhancing the air defenses at the airport and surrounding areas. Construction of three new airports has also been initiated in Xinjiang since 2019. In the far western reaches of Xinjiang near China's borders with Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan, China is constructing a new airport at Tashkorgan. The project, which came with a price tag of 1.63 billion renminbi, $230 million, is a key part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a flagship component of the BRI. While the airport is likely to serve primarily civilian purposes, there is a new military heliport less than 8 kilometers north of the airport that was completed around 2020. Despite the military benefits that China's investments in the region have brought, the PLA faces several notable disadvantages compared to India. Much of China's side of the border is situated on the highest portions of the Tibetan Plateau, which is often described as the roof of the world owing to its high elevation. Twenty of China's airports and heliports within Xinjiang and Tibet are located more than 3,000 meters above sea level far higher than most airports around the world. Nearly all these high elevation facilities are new or recently upgraded. The PLA faces major operational challenges associated with operating at such high altitudes. The thinner atmosphere makes it more difficult for aircraft to take off. To account for this, high-altitude airports typically must have much longer runways, a trend that is borne out at many of China's airports in the region. Tibet's Kamdo Bamda Airport boasts the world's longest paved runway, which stretches a staggering 5,500 meters. Shigats Peace Airport also in Tibet features a runway stretching 5,000 meters, tying it for the third longest in the world. Even with longer runways, airplanes taking off from such high altitudes face significant limitations. Fighter aircraft carrying munitions are typically unable to take off with a full load of fuel, which significantly limits their range. The PLAAF can supplement the range of its aircraft by providing mid-air refueling, but this adds significant logistical complexity and exposes tanker aircraft during a conflict. The harsh and frigid terrain of the Himalayas compounds these issues by making it more challenging to operate and maintain equipment, both in the air and on the ground. The conditions also pose challenges for troops who require special clothing, equipment, and training to withstand the elements. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.